Welcome back, friends. I bet you're thinking to yourselves, Monica, what a dramatic YouTube video title. Like, why are you why are you being a drama queen? I will tell you guys. I will let you know why I thought that this pop-up was the worst pop-up I've done in 2023. And and yes, you you are right. I am being very, very dramatic because this pop-up wasn't really all that bad, honestly. It was fine. But it was the worst of this year for a few reasons, but it was also the most eye-opening pop-up I've done all year, and I'm gonna tell you why. So let's get right into it, because I didn't record that much during this pop-up, so I only have so much time for this voiceover. Now the reason I am here all on my lonesome, trying to put together these vertical edge pieces all on my own, is because I had to send my mom and Josh away once again because I forgot my scrunchie pegboard, and I also forgot my round collection stand from vertical edge, the two most important displays of this pop-up. I forgot them at home. What a mess. So already that was making me feel off. On top of this, the vendor booth assignments were not actual assignments. No spots were assigned. So as we arrived in our car, they were setting up based on first come first serve. And so we pulled up to the spot and they were like, you're gonna be in this spot. And so everyone was kind of like not sure where they're supposed to be. We had to keep moving our tent over to match up. It's It was, it was kind of chaos. So that's why I'm here alone, not really talking to the camera. So I'm trying to calm down through all this frustration of not really knowing what to do. Look at me with this, <laughs> with this tablecloth. This is the saddest thing ever. I'm going to leave this full clip in because honestly, this is real life. It's just, just, just a, a girl trying to put on her tablecloth. Finally, as you can probably already tell, it is a windy, windy day. And so all my stuff was flying around everywhere. When I do eventually put up my tent, which I think it's already up at this point, um, I don't have the canopy tent on top and it's hard to tell right now, but that's because my tent was flying away, guys. We put up the canopy fabric piece that goes on top of the bones of the tent and my tent was literally flying away. It was the scariest moment of my life. Rookie mistake. Um, I did have sandbags on, but still it was flying away. That's how windy it was. I need to get better weights. Lesson learned. But I'm setting up some of my table displays that I know are really stable and won't fly away in the wind. I have my stadium display and my belly display from Vertical Edge. These are my staples. Literally, we'll never do a pop-up without them ever again because they are my favorite. They look good, they're easy to bring, and they're easy to put together. So all of my candles are going on here. I'm talking to my mom and Josh on the phone because they're parking and they're just doing so much for me and I'm very grateful for them, but I'm continuing to unpack all my stuff, including my mirror, which I'm hanging the normal way I hang, but I had to take it down because the wind was making it fly away. This sticker stand took some time to put it all together, put my stickers on it, and then it just kept flying away. So I had to take that down too. Now I don't have my mirror, I don't have my sticker display. I'm like crossing my fingers that this vertical edge garment rack is gonna hold up and spoiler it does hold up i was very happy about it i did have to make some alterations with how i put the tote bags on the garment rack because of the wind uh but you'll see that later um this is me like almost giving up honestly but <laughs> we're still getting through it mindset is really important for these pop-ups you really have to just like let negative things happen and then just not think too much about it. Otherwise, you're gonna wanna go home. There were a couple moments while I was setting up where I was talking to my mom and Josh and I was like, should I just go home? Should we just pack this all up and not do this pop-up? And they were like, no, you should do it. So I stuck around I'm very happy I did, but just know that even for me, thoughts like that come into my head and you really do have to just push through it because you have to know that it's going to be a good experience no matter what. I would like to take a brief moment away from my not so perfect pop-up shop experience to thank today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an amazing online learning community with thousands of courses to help you reach your personal, professional, and creative goals. 
Skillshare has so many courses that I have personally taken, especially within the productivity category. I'm personally taking a couple courses right now, one by Brooke Glaser called Productivity for Artists, Organizing Yourself for Success, and another really cool one, Notion for YouTube Creators, Easily Manage Your Creative Projects by Asante Bean. These two are like the reason why I am thriving right now in my small business endeavors and YouTube endeavors. So I definitely recommend those two. But if you're into more of like artistic ones, there are really cool poetry ones, drawing, even how to do resin art, palm or clay art, anything you can think of. I was talking about in a previous video how I wanted to get into wholesale for my handmade goods brand and I searched it up on Skillshare and they had a course. If you would like to try out Skillshare, the first 500 people to click the link in my description can get a 30 day free trial to Skillshare. Thank you so much Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to my pop-up shop experience. First time I'm talking to you today and there's jazz music playing and it's very windy so hopefully you can hear me but I'm at the handmade market and we don't have a canopy because it's so windy it's pretty cold hi <laughs> it's so embarrassing I got cut off by my friends who stopped by and they said hi they were like in the back of, my, of the frame um, but basically it's like bare bones I have my pegboard that keeps like falling off flying away like my scrunchies keep flying away the pegboard itself is like pretty much fine candles are doing well my um, garment rack, I had to put everything on the bottom because like at the top, they were like swaying too much. Um, and then, wait, let me flip the camera. The scrunchie pegboard itself is doing fine. Again, the scrunchies are just falling and these are doing fine because they're heavy. Forgot a safety pin for this guy too. So keeps like flapping up and covering everything. Kiosk looks good. I brought the front panels again and I got these S hooks to hold the tops. I only had two though. So for the bottom ones, my mom just tied string to hold it. Um, I'm gonna buy more of those S hooks though to put here. And then the bottom part keeps like flapping in the wind like this. So I need to like figure out a way to tie that because there's no like bottom hole to tie it to. So I gotta figure that out. And this is the back of my kiosk. I know a lot of people like were asking about this, but I keep everything here. At the top, I have my shopping bags and it looks so messy oh gosh but i have candles holding them out because the wind literally gets in here blows them like through the front of the kiosk and like away i had to take my spin the wheel down because it was flying away all the stickers are in here because they're flying away extra lids are there and then all of my candles are down here doing great because they're heavy so that's back here and i have my wagon with the empty boxes and the vertical ledge bags my backpack tripod and that's it canopy should be there but obviously it's not it looks kind of like ratchet in my opinion but that's what we had to do today the sun feels so nice <laughs> now you may recognize this spot and that's because just a couple months before this pop-up I had done another pop-up in this exact location. It's the Grove Street Path Station area in Jersey City. Perfect prime location for people getting off the subway and just walking around. It's a very walkable area and neighborhood. So I had high hopes for this pop-up. However, because of the weather, and just the vibes of the day, I guess people weren't really coming out as much. So I don't have as much footage of me interacting with customers and checking people out because honestly I didn't have um, that many sales, which is perfectly fine and perfectly average. It did make me feel extra grateful when I did have customers stopping by and checking out my items. People were as kind as always, complimenting my stuff asking about how things are made. I didn't have as many people purchasing things. I did have a few sales and I was so pumped. Literally every time someone would buy something, 
um, and there was a good amount of standing around, which is never all that fun, but I made the most of it. This event was actually called the Jersey City Handmade Market. Every vendor here makes handmade goods. Nothing here is produced at big manufacturers. The way I found this event was actually the event organizer or one of the event organizers reached out to me via email because they had found me at a different market, actually the market that had happened two months before this one. They grabbed my card and they emailed me about joining this market. So as soon as you get started with vendor markets, more and more opportunities will just come to you. I know a lot of people wonder how to get invites to markets or how to even know when and where markets are happening as soon as you start doing a few the rest will just start coming so i'm already backing up because that's the end of the day i had a few sales had a good time in the wind getting to know my vendor booth neighbors and now we're packing up guys what a pop-up shop this market was something i was on this amazing streak of just super successful super invigorating like really great weather just like very amazing pop-ups one after another leading up to this pop-up which was obviously not my favorite <laughs> don't get me wrong so grateful to have been there to have been accepted into this market i met some really great vendors on either side of me i met some really great customers people who showed up again after seeing me at previous markets and also i did make sales it's not like i didn't make any sales so let me just get right into that first so this was october 15th i had 571 dollars and 48 cents in total sales so it was kind of like sporadic throughout the day Actually not really, I had like a good amount at like noon and then again at 2 p.m. then again at 4 p.m. Just for comparison, the pop-up I did literally in that same location just two months before this one. It was a different like event organizer and everything, um, but same exact location. I had made $3,000 at that market and then this one I made about $600. Obviously a lot went into this. The weather was not my favorite it didn't rain which is really great but it was really gloomy and really windy and pretty much the first really cold day that i've done a market this year so i definitely saw the correlation between the amount of people who were walking by during like a really sunny day pop-up versus the gloomy weather pop-up but going back i felt like this market definitely started off on like the wrong foot because i forgot something again at this pop-up i forgot my scrunchie pegboard which is so important and i also forgot my board that held my mini candles i needed both of those because those were like the core displays <laughs> that i use especially since i didn't have my a-frame unit um, i didn't bring that big unit because i kind of knew it would be windy and i didn't really trust that it would stay up and I don't know, I just didn't feel like bringing it. So the scrunchie pegboard and the other vertical ledge like mini candles display were really important for me to have. So I had to make my mom <laughs> and Josh go back and get it and come back, which I hated doing. On top of that, this is the first ever market I've ever done where there weren't pre-assigned booth spots. So normally the night before or the morning of, I get my spot and all the spots are labeled each 10 feet away from each other. They're either labeled by numbers and each number corresponds to the brand or they actually put the brand name on the sidewalk and you just know exactly where to go before you start setting up. But at this market, it was like a first come first serve spot. As cars were driving in like the little path, people were being assigned spots. So like a car would drive in and be assigned to this spot. But then there's a car behind them who kind of had to like go around and they were assigned to this spot and then cars behind that, so it, there was traffic jams and a lot of frustrated people. On top of that, I know you're supposed to unload all of your stuff and then move your car so that there's more space for the cars to drive through on that path, but that's not really what people were doing, so that's not what we did. We kind of just kept our car there just because that's what everyone else was doing and that gave us more time to like set up the canopy with the three of us there rather than my mom needing to leave to put the car away um, and it was just down to me and Josh to handle the canopy tent so the three of us were working on it and then people started like yelling at us to move our car when the people in front of us didn't even move their car yet so this is a lot of like technicalities and details that just made like the beginning of the market very stressful and frustrating. I also encountered some vendors who weren't very nice unfortunately normally vendors are very 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 nice and we all support each other the two people to 
either side of my booth as well as the people across from me were really great but there were some people like a little further away who were like kind of rude and kind of mean and i don't know it was definitely just the emotions of the fact that everything was kind of chaotic in the beginning of the day getting to people but still kind of rude and then as we set up our tent we had to take off the canopy on top of the actual like bones of the tent because my tent was literally flying away i need to get better weights this whole pop-up experience was definitely a learning experience i'm going to take it as like it wasn't the perfect pop-up it wasn't like super successful but it did teach me like a lot i need to get weights that are the actual like circle weights with like a hole through them where you put the little like <laughs> tent leg through i'll put a picture here my weights that are currently just bags filled with sand um weren't doing it and my tent was flying so we needed to take the canopy part of the tent off and that helped and it was actually perfect nothing really seemed to move or fly away it was the canopy part that was acting as almost like a way for the wind to blow the tent away so it just looked bad to me and i'm all about aesthetics and i thought my booth looked really bad that day and i attribute it to the fact that the tent didn't look great i also couldn't hang up my mirror because the mirror was swaying so much in the wind i need to come up with a better way to hang that i hang it currently with the like metal rods that come with the college over the door mirror which are great if it's not that windy and then also i got lazy with little things i never got a tablecloth that fits my taller smaller table and so i, I think it just kind of looked bad that's where i had my mini candles and also the few glass mugs that i had i also realized that when i only have four glass mugs it kind of looks not that great it's either i should have like 20 or none at all because when i only have a few it just doesn't look put together. I was placed next to a really, really, really cool brand with beautiful displays. All of her displays were actually from Vertical Ledge and we talked about how much we love them together. Um, but she had a candle and like wax melts and room sprays and just like things that smell good kind of products. Her aesthetic was very similar to mine and we were right next to each other. So there was a lot of comparisons going on for customers. Um, I would see customers come to my booth and then go to her booth and then come back and like back and forth and then ultimately customers would sometimes decide to buy mine but i think more often would choose to buy hers which i love that for her like go you but her tent was also like able to stand up with the canopy on top and she had some really nice displays she brought like her full setup i only brought like probably three-fourths of my setup on top of my tent just looking like so bad and that was kind of disheartening like that has to do with the event organizer not pre like selecting spaces for us other markets that i do they'll purposefully not put candle makers or like similar product people right next to each other so there's not that much comparison you can kind of have them like spread out throughout the entire market which i think is fair and i think that's what they should have done here but unfortunately we were literally two of the most similar vendors at this entire market and we we're right next to each other i did wear proper attire which i was happy about I did bring a hat because I knew it would be cold. I did bring like a scarf to wrap around or a nice jacket. I also brought a scarf and a jacket um, and a hat for my mom because I wasn't sure if she brought hers and she didn't. So I'm glad I brought that for her. And yeah, it was relatively slow. I wasn't talking to people for most of the time. There wasn't like a line or anything for people waiting to buy anything. I feel like I am now spoiled after having such a positive experience at my last Hoboken Arts and Music Festival where it was just so amazing and so many people came and everyone bought my stuff. Now when i have like ones that are like this they feel like super unsuccessful and just like not worth it but i know that's not true because i did learn a lot from this and i still made obviously like 600 dollars worth of sales the vendor fee for this market was 135 dollars so that was kind of like a big ish vendor fee they did validate parking so there wasn't that 20 dollars parking fee and i can't remember if this market required insurance if they did it was 100 dollars if not it wasn't i have to go double check that yeah so far in 2023 this is my most unsuccessful pop-up or my least favorite pop-up let's just go with that just like my general feelings toward it it was my least favorite and i'm okay with saying that because if this was my least favorite pop-up that's a good sign because i still made money i still met great people i still had a lot of help i still got good content out of it so in the end it wasn't like 
the worst thing. Packing up was pretty normal. Um, it did start getting dark towards the end of it, so I started packing up a little bit early. Loading everything into the car was fine, except for the fact that it was just as chaotic packing up and leaving on that little road as it was setting up. There was no method to the badness of like cars coming through and where they were stopping and parking. There were some people shouting at vendors. There were vendors shouting at other vendors and it just, the vibes weren't amazing all the time. <laughs> Either way, I'm happy to have done it. Next year, I think I'll only do it if the weather is amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Make sure to check them out. The link is in my description and I will see you in the next one. Bye.